happy to be here. Hello, everybody. So I will be presenting my experience of writing a GDAL driver together with the help of my colleagues uh, Oliver and Gülsen. And um, yeah, I'm from German Aerospace Center, but from the Institute of Transportation Systems in Braunschweig. And we have a nice uh, set of yeah, playground research infrastructure to develop things and to do actually hands-on research. And I will be talking about a very specific road network modeling format. It's uh, Open Drive. And first of all, I will give you some introduction of where OpenDrive is used and then the steps involved in getting it into the GIS domain. So yeah, let's take a look on the applications. So for example, OpenDrive is very often used in different simulation aspects. This is a, a snapshot from a driving simulation, like cooperative simulation with uh, traffic participants like cyclists and pedestrians. And we do a lot of human resources um, uh, human uh, factors research in order to see how people and humans behave in yeah, traffic and in mobility. So this is for urban di digital di twin creation of the road space, you need specific uh, automotive engineering formats and one of it could be open drive. Uh, another example would be traffic simulation. Probably some of you are involved in that. And there are various traffic simulation software frameworks. One of is uh, Sumo, which is also developed by DLR. And uh, another core uh, yeah, use case would be all the development involved around automated driving. So you for sure need sensors in cars, but also in the development stage, cars very often require HD maps. And um, so here, very often, there is a transition from the simulation domain into the automated driving, where also Open Drive plays a key role and very often open drive data is used also in automated driving. So what is then in the end open drive? So it's a format to describe uh, yeah, highly detailed road networks and uh, HD basically there are many different definitions but basically it consists of a lane detailed model of the road environment. Um, so you have all the lanes, uh, cycleways and also information about the traffic infrastructure, the markings, the signals and signs and um, whatever you're interested in, depending on the application in the end. And the core, the most important thing probably is not that you have only geometric elements, but you have also like semantics included. So you have links between a traffic signal to a certain lane or a stop, li a stop line. And um, um, the colleagues from uh, University of Tartu, they gave a nice introduction to this whole complex uh, thing from the Autonomous, autom autonomous Driving Lab uh, earlier this day. So there's a nice talk you can also watch. It gives you a nice introduction. And um, yeah, when it comes then to the HD topic, what is HD, like high definition? There are also very different application definitions. So very often it's something around the global referencing of the whole HD map sphere between 10 and 20 centimeters globally and that's mostly sufficient at least for autonomous driving. But um, yeah, in order to get this data, you probably will not find it publicly available in such a detail. So you very often have to uh, subcontract mobile mapping companies, which then go out with mobile mapping devices, cars with LiDAR scanners, and uh, collect all the necessary data for you. So this is expensive and slow because in most times, all the annotation of the features you require is not done with AI or machine learning. It's mostly manual annotation and it then takes like up to three months to get a strip of 10 kilometers of road. And then it's outdated already. So it's a very, yeah, <coughs> stupid situation very often. And uh, recently I've been involved in many initiatives uh, with uh, uh, public authorities, uh, various cities, Hamburg and Munich in Germany, where there is a transition of between this automotive domain, automotive engineering domain and the, yeah, public authorities, and public authorities very often use GIS workflows and this specific open drive format, which is, it's an open format standardized by um, ASAM um, organization in Germany, but it's still very uh, sophisticated and it does not fit well into GIS workflows. And uh, very often you either have open drive, want to get it into the GIS, or you have cadastral data, which you want to be able to export to open drive, and both is not very trivial. And uh, yeah, this is some kind of a gap, and we tried to 
at least bridge these domains a little bit by providing a GDAR driver for this ASM Open Drive format. And I will show you how this Open Drive uh, looks like. So basically, let's focus on the main important topic. So it's the geometry. So usually in GIS context, you deal with discrete coordinates. So you have simple feature points, line strings, and polygons. So you have a discrete coordinate. My traffic sign is located at latitude, longitude, whatever. And in Open Drive, it's a little bit different. So everything, it originated in the driving simulation domain. So everything is bound to a uh, road reference line, which is basically modeled in the middle. So it can have a very sophisticated geometric course. And everything else is basically attached in relation to it. So um, if you had a traffic sign, it would not be at latitude, longitude, whatever, but it would be at a distance linear reference along the reference line with an offset to the side of, I don't know, four meters, whatever. And these are the local coordinates, the S and the T offset. And um, so also this applies for the lanes. So the lane is not modeled as a polygon. Um, it just described by the width from this reference line. And all this can be described in parametric polynomial uh, yeah, functions, mathematical functions, basically. And uh, you have various kinds of geometric elements. You can have line strings and spirals and arcs and polynomials. And in the end, it all originated from the idea of having like a smooth road to follow if I send an automated traffic on this road so that it really turns smoothly and not has any sharp gaps in turning. And um, if we look in detail in some kind of geometry definition, so this open drive data model is very complex and it's yeah, mainly um, uh, transferred in XML files. And here you basically have, if you have a geometry description of a parametric polynomial, so you have the uh, parameters the, of the cubic polynomial, and then you have um, x and y discrete coordinates where this starts, and then you have a parameter, this could be the length of this whole curve, which is then described together with the parameters, it's describing the course of a reference line. And uh, this makes it a little bit complex to get it into the GIS domain natively. And it superimposes some uh, weird like modeling constraints. So if you want to have a consistent road network uh, without any problems during your simulation, if you compute any uh, traffic simulation on that, you have to make sure that you don't have any gaps and that you don't have, oops, that was the wrong button, that you don't have any uh, overlaps because for the simulation, this would not be a problem. But in the end, you want to visualize it, so you want to have a nice 3D export of your road network, and then it will mess up with the textures. So in the end, you will have something like this. So you need to make sure that you have a continuous geometry definition. And in the end, it's a hierarchical data model, so the main core is always the road, and then you have all the elements below. So this would be the geometry tag, where the geometry is happening, but you have elevation profiles, you have lateral elevation profiles, you have cross-fall, and all this included in the data format. And the most complex thing will be then uh, messing with all the lanes and lane sections, and then the lanes again have some links to predecessor successors. And uh, so it's all about this semantic linking between all the elements. So you have uh, links on the road level, you have links on the lane level, then you have validity of signals, and uh, then you come to junction and elements where then you again experience linkage from incoming to outgoing lanes and that's pretty, yeah, interesting. And so this is all required for the specific application use cases and we just wanted to make it easier at least to be able to load data into the GIS. Um, for example, if I'm a public authority and I get such data formats from my uh, automotive companies which, for example, want to uh, send an autonomously driving shuttle through my very city, so they should at least cooperate with me. <laughs> and then I get this data and I cannot do anything with it. Um, so for that we uh, tried to extend GDAL and it went pretty well. GDAL most of you probably know, I do not have to talk very much about it, so it's a fancy processing library for yeah, converting through and forth between raster and vector data formats and um, I would suggest that yeah, m most of open and proprietary tools rely on GDAL in the back end, and it has a, a big community. 
And the core thing of GDAL is uh, the, of the vector format is the OGC simple feature vector format. And the idea is to transform all the complex open drive geometries into OGC simple features. And in, uh, yeah, for doing that, we did not reinvent the wheel. We tried to reuse already available open source software. And for that, um, there exists a library called libopendrive. It's developed, it was, or it is developed uh, near Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe in Germany. And it's uh, openly available under Apache 2.0 uh, license. And this basically does all this yeah, discretization or sampling of the uh, continuous geometries into simple features. And this looks like that then. So here would be a snippet of some random geometry elements in OpenDrive. Uh, not necessarily describing this very nice curve here, but what we want to achieve is like simple feature points forming a line string in simple features. So lib open drive is now doing this already for us. It exposes all these discrete coordinates for us. And with that, we are basically done. So we just need to grab the data from lib open drive and put it into GDAL, where uh, the fancy um, simple feature model is populated. And then we get something what we can work with, like everybody should know the well-known text representation of line strings. And uh, with that, we can progress further and put the data into our GIS. And it would look like this, for example. So this would be a lane border layer uh, directly read from an open drive XML file. Um, and yeah, there are different mapping types. So this is what is currently supported by lib open drive and our GDAL driver. So you have point elements, representing signals, you have line strings for reference lines and these lane borders here. And we have polygonal, polygonal aerial image um, uh, data for the actual polygons of lanes. And for example, the road mark, the white markings are also represented as um, polygons. So it took us some while to get this driver working, but uh, we got a, a superb help from Ivan from uh, the GDAL project. Um, and he assisted us and me very much in um, yeah, getting the driver at least where it is now. It will be included soon in the next release. And first of all, many attempts did not re result in our open drive being uh, successfully detected as available driver, but then finally we managed to do it and we had this open drive thing. And uh, here you, it's a very important thing that when you talk about ASM open drive, to capitalize the drive because it's an actually acronym for open dynamic road information for vehicle environment and most people don't know that but it's um, then very misleading if you don't do it so it looked like that this is very recent uh, we created a pull request uh, to merge our changes and it was a hot discussion around that I learned so many things about GDAL and how to yeah, work with it how it works internally and thank you again for that for all the assistance and the guidance um, and yeah, I think it will be hopefully included in GDAL 3.10 release. And here I have a small demo, how it looks like. So in the end, the dream would be to be able to drag and drop open drive files into QGIS. So here we have an aerial image in uh, Wolfsburg in Germany. And I previously created a geo package with GDAL with our driver from the open drive. And if I drag and drop it here, you will see that these are all the different layers available from the driver and we are interested in uh, lanes and road marks and signals. So you can just simply load it as you yeah, would probably do with any other data source and then apply basic styling rules in order to get it to look like a road network. And um, so probably I do not have to tell you how this works best. But this would be like a quick and easy going approach um, of the usage of the driver. And um, so you can do various stylings. You can also publish this as open web map uh, later on as web feature service to expose the geometries. You have all the attributes from the original open drive included and whatever is missing can still be extended um, by extending lib open drive. So you have the lanes with the um, properties and that's basically it. So you can get started very easily to prototype the data set you got and to overlay it with your aerial images. And um, that's basically what was our goal. And I think we are nearly achieving it step by step. So for sure, there are also other tools for OpenDrive data.
Mostly there exists proprietary software. Uh, there are many different proprietary tools. We heard about uh, MathWorks Roadrunner before in the previous presentation this morning, uh, but there's also the 3 and 3 3D Builder, um, and they are very often very expensive and have limited interoperability with GIS workflows. But what I can highly recommend to you if you're working with OpenDrive and the data formats around that, visit this link. There you have a nice collection of tools and data and everything around OpenDrive and OpenScenario and all the other uh, formats uh, standardized by Asam Consortium. And uh, one of it is a pretty well-known OpenDrive viewer. It's a website where you can drag and drop your OpenDrive files and uh, get a basic rudimentary 3D visualization, also with access to all the attributes. And this one is like using the lib open drive backend, which we are using too. So it's developed by the same guy who uh, developed lib open drive. And whenever we now want, we extended actually, we extended lib open drive uh, in order to pass the signals, which have not been included previously. And uh, we com contributed that, and he included into his lib uh, in his open drive viewer directly. So that was already a nice collaboration. And um, there is a lot of work going on in the Technical University of Munich. They, a few years ago, released a very sophisticated transportation module to OGC CTGML 3.0. And there is a nice tool, it's called Airtron, which takes OpenDrive and loads it into CTGML into this very new transportation area model, a uh, transportation model. And it comes with a very sophisticated validation on OpenDrive data. So it's really powerful. Um, and this feature, for example, is not offered by LibOpenDrive. So, yeah, that was basically it, our experience. We made it into uh, some progress, getting the uh, driver into GDAL. And the next steps would be, um, so what is still missing, so this driver is a plugin-based driver, so you need, as a user, you need to supply a release of LibOpenDrive. You can find the source code on GitHub, but you basically have to compile it yourself or use uh, one of the um, uh, Docker images provided by, uh, by GDAL right now. And we would like to create some binary releases ready for, for, the user, for the users soon. And there's a new initiative going on. So this uh, ASAM organization is, uh, yeah, now we will have in July a uh, ideation workshop on this transportation area concept where we want to bring OpenDrive and CDGML 3.0 a little bit further together. This is open to the public. You can register and we are open for new stakeholders and views and perspectives on, onto the whole topic. And we uh, try to make a proposal to start a new research or like an implementation project in order to, uh, yeah, I don't know, create some kind of an OpenDrive 2.0 or whatever, something which is better bound to GIS context and GIS workflows. And CDGML is a very yeah, fruitful way, I would say, where to go. Also, there is an OGC there will be spawned probably a new transportation mobility domain working group. It's just in the making, I would say. And all this topic will also be included there, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so in my research area of transportation systems, there is not only autonomous driving, there are also uh, rail network description formats. We already heard uh, in my colleague's talk today something about RailML, and um, there are some more formats, and with this plug-in ability of GDAL, we could provide very nice and neat uh, yeah, ways of bridging these very domain-specific, narrow-minded formats and communities with the GIS domain, and this little bit the playground I'm working on. And that's basically it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Is there any um, effort looking into maybe going the other way to writing at least some of the base parts of OpenDrive from OSM or some of the other formats like that? Um, very good question. Uh, this is a very frequent demand. Um, I had a talk uh, with the uh, University of Tartu, the guys from the Autonomous Driving Lab. They are able to export OpenDrive from something OpenStreetMap like data. It's called, yeah, they have their own data model, but there are converters from, there's a format called LaneLet, very simple description of HD road network data sets. 
which is based on the uh, OpenStreetMap data model. So there are some community modules for exporting, but it's a very complex topic because you have to provide all this data model with the referencing, the, the internal relationships between all the objects. Then you, if you really want to get continuous geometries, like I described in OpenDrive, you have to implement like mathematical curve fitting of the lane borders, of the reference lines, of the elevation model, and this is not trivial. So th I would dream of a QGIS <laughs> plugin to do that. So maybe we are not so far from that. Be cool. People are burnt out. <laughs> I expected more questions. Who has worked with OpenDrive before? Two people. <laughs> Great. Okay. Sure, then. Feel free to contact me later, maybe. Yeah, we talked earlier, and yes, I had the same demand or, or wish that is there an opposite way driver that we have some kind of database and to convert it to, yeah. But as it is that the open drive is quite complicated and, uh, and yeah, the initial data can be in very different formats, so you need to agree what is the initial start position to convert it to open drive, and it's, but things are moving. Yeah, and uh, I tried to connect the different initiatives. So in Germany, there are also on university base many things going on, and the public authorities are now, uh, yeah, seeing, getting, or realizing the demand of somehow, yeah, being able to work with su such data because the automotive industry is pushing and also requesting. So the automotive companies go to the city munis municipalities and tell them, hey, you have nice cadastral data. Can you export it as Open Drive? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to manually model it in one of those proprietary editors. And um, yeah, but then they, very often these editors, they are focusing on American road networks. So the layout of the exported Open Drive will not be how you expect it to be in Germany. <laughs> so yeah, you see the problem and uh, maybe the demand of a new community around that. Is it always in uh, projected coordinates? Very good question. I didn't say anything about that. Um, yes, OpenDrive is only valid in uh, Cartesian two-dimensional coordinates, and the OpenDrive has a header, the XML, where you can include a projection, like a proj4 string, pretty old-fashioned, but at least you can specify your custom uh, UTM projections also with uh, false easting, false northing, which is very often used in order to get this uh, HD map scene into your city, wherever you want to have it. And then it works well, yeah. You might need a bit more to get that really high 20 centimeter you know, accuracy. Uh, we should not talk too much about accuracy <laughs> because this is always, the automotive companies, they are demanding like one centimeter of accuracy. And then uh, the mobile mapping companies, they say, yeah, we can provide that, but nobody's really double checking if the result is really as accurate. They just get data, they are happy, and in the end it's 20 centimeters, they can drive, they can simulate, it's all fine. They, they just increase the number of decimal places. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.